Hi and welcome back to Fly TV Squeeze. I'm Nicholas Bauer and we're back on Gotland, uh, fishing with my two good friends here, Per and Robert. They are guides at Fisher Dream. So Per, what do you think about the conditions today? I think we have good trout conditions. Uh, we have some movement in the water, we have some dark skies. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, fish should be moving quite close to the shore. Yeah. So Is this an area where you have any place where fish can spawn, any creeks going up here? Yeah, or? we have a few creeks, uh, yeah. not too far away. Okay, so there could be some kelts over here too? Could be kelts, could be some brown ones. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. So my name is Per Jobs and uh, I'm the owner of Fisher Dream. We have uh, a local business in Gotland in sport fishing. We do uh, guiding, accommodation, we have a shop. Uh, and we also have business in Swedish Lapland, the fishing lodge Chornajok. Uh, but originally we started the company here in Gotland for the sea trout fishing uh, in 2006. So we have good chances for wild sea trout here. Uh, good sized ones too normally. We'll see what we can do today here in these windy conditions. As always when we're fishing sea trout or sea run browns it's always <clears throat> it's very important to, to make a, a loop knot. So if it's heavily weighted it can drop, <clears throat> dive down really quick. Yay! Good one! <laughs> Uh, we'll come back to my fly later. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Pat. That's a good sized fish. Yeah, you can see it's a colored fish clearly now. You can see the fins, you can see the brown color. It has some power, as you can see. Here we go. Decent size. I want to measure this one. 62. I'm gonna hand this darling over to you. So this is a, a typical Gotland trout. We know this because it has the fat fin still there. Okay, so we are ready to release this guy. Uh, important to move it a little bit back and forward to uh, get some oxygen through it. Nice job, man. <laughs> Good job. So my fly, my fly look well. Yeah, it look, looks good to the fish too, it seems. Yeah. Today when we have these really windy conditions that we have today, now we're on the west side, so it's not as windy as on the east side, but um, in any case, we're just gonna go show you some, some, some tricks to make it easier to cast, um, because you can actually use the wind uh, in your favor. So what you can do is you need to change your casting a little bit, as Robert's gonna show you now. A normal back cast is you stop the rod pretty high, um, as you can see he's doing at the moment. The problem with that is that the wind from the back will just kill the loop and, and you're not able to, to push the line through the wind. So what you do instead is that you lower the rod and you increase the line speed a lot and you push the line under the wind and then increase the speed, also increase the double hoil and then shoot the line. And there then you, you can get the line, nice one, <laughs> <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> then you can get the line under the wind and you can push the line through the wind and you can still cast when you have a lot of wind from the back. It's just a small trick but it's, it's really easy when you start to learn it. <laughs> That's a nice one. Nice fish. Great. See how long it is? Yeah. It's probably, uh, it's a 54 centimeters. Yeah. Great condition. It's a little bit later in the evening hour. I've lost the fish and I had a few strikes and, and uh, 
this one took really hard the first time and then I just speeded up the magic head and I made a stop and it just hammered it. It's a little silvery one. Oh. He wasn't ready. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha